Alrighty guys, I'm Orthodonna. We are here for Seven Deadly Sins Revival of the Commandments episode 14. So, once again, <laughs> I feel like I apologize for this a lot, but maybe I don't. Uh, but sorry for the gruff. Um, I we lost power for like 24 hours, and uh, and then uh, we got it back a little while ago, and then I decided to take a nap, and then I was gonna shave, shower, and and record. But my my 30 minute to an hour nap that I had planned ended up being four hours. I don't know how I managed to sleep that long, but it really messed me up, and I didn't want to take the time to shave, so I'll just shave for the next video or something. But but yeah, anyway, um, last time on Seven Deadly Sins, we had the, uh, the fight between Galland and, uh, Bon, and, uh, and then the other girl, the, I can't remember her name, it started with, like, an M, I think, uh, but she ended up removing Bon's soul, and Galland almost ate it, but we had, uh, oh, why can't I think of that? awesome guy's name, shoot, uh, he sacrificed, it was, uh, Bond's kind of, like, adoptive father in a way, someone that helped him out when he was young, took his place, and, uh, and got eaten instead to save Bond, to save one of his sons, you know, he kind of, like, gave up his soul for it, but, uh, which was sad, but yeah, um, the fight between Bond and them was cool, I enjoyed seeing Bond kind of take, like, half their power and and really go to town on them. You know, that was a lot of fun. And we also had a bit of Elaine stuff. You know, we had the... Con not the conclusion, but we had her being, like, evil at first and then transitioning to, like, uh, herself again. But because she transitioned to herself, she's going to die now. So we'll see what they do with that. And, uh, and, yeah, I think the rest of the sins are on the move. So I am very much looking forward to this episode. All right, guys, so let's jump into it, shall we? Alrighty, so we're going to start the episode in five, four, three, two, one, now. I think uh, it'll probably remind me of his name right here. Meliscula is her name. Oh, right, crap, I totally forgot about this fight. That's my bad. Dreyfus got, like, grabbed at the end, right? Yes, this guy. Friggin' Jericho, being a badass, carrying two people. Oh no! Ah, oh, Elaine. Uh oh. That's not good. Holy crap! What the hell? Ah, damn it! <laughs> I don't want it now! Go away, opening! Shoot, it didn't remind us of, uh... The guys... Oh my god, why can't I remember it? I was really good at remembering it, like, every episode up until now. It's crazy how those things can just poof like that. <laughs> it started with, like, an E, didn't it? Ah. All right, we have a new opening. I forgot about that. Gonna open my water and take a sip. I don't have my phone here. Well, I guess I'm on my computer. What am I thinking? Ah. 
Man, I am so triggered by that. Let's see if I can look it up quickly. <clears throat> Zivago! Damn it, didn't even start with an E. I'm an idiot. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. Zivago! <clears throat> Z and E. They're pretty close to the same letter, right? All right, Master of the Sun. What? <clears throat> oh, did it bounce over them? I'm guessing. <laughs> Barely. Jesus. Jesus. He's just golfing! <laughs> nice shot. Jesus. Uh-oh. Oh no, it's good backspin! Oh, uh, Jericho! Uh, she's not dead, right? She caught it? Oh, yes! What a badass! Oh, shit, she got messed up. She definitely can't carry them now. Swear to God. Oh my God, Jericho, you goddamn badass. They could keep up with them so damn easily. They they know exactly where they are. They're just messing with them. Oh shit, off a cliff. Of course. Oh, nice, Elaine. Gonna be some kind of like wild thing in here. Just random ass lights? What? <clears throat> My sweet gluttony? What? They found Eskander! What the hell? Right? I'm guessing this is Eskander because they said they needed to find him and then they flashed to this guy. In like the after credits. And he has this giant weapon up there, I'm pretty sure. You look familiar. <laughs> He's a skittish little thing, isn't he? <laughs> Just lock him in a safe, all right. <laughs> he calls this the pantry. 
Now, Skander is supposed to be stronger than, uh, Meliodas, right? So I wonder if he'll be able to defend him, regardless of his skittish nature, it seems. <clears throat> Just drinking booze. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you pass. <laughs> the wipe out humanity. <laughs> Is that gonna, like, awaken him? I just want him to see him go ham. That was a creepy shot. Uh-oh. I like how that safe door seems to be stronger than the rock around it. I feel like he could just break the rock. Gallon game! <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh jeez, what kind of game? I'm hopeless when it comes to a fight. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, no. <laughs> Is he just gonna one-shot Galland? Oh, my God. I want that to happen so much, but I feel like it won't. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, oh no, it's glasses! Oh my god, they're just gonna sit there and wait for him to wake up. At least take the rocks off him if you don't want him to wake up. Jeez. Oh my god. He can't even lift it. Oh, the voice. It's a one-handed axe! <laughs> He's jacked. Oh my god. Does he have two personalities, or... Oh, 
The pinnacle of all races. He's jacked as hell. Pride. We found pride. I love how Goofy looks at that little transition scene. Lionson Escarter. Oh my god, that axe is so heavy, Gallon can't pick it up. <gasps> oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh shit, that didn't kill him. Jesus, how the hell do you kill him? <laughs> Intentionally held back. Oh, jeez. <laughs> What? <laughs> Holy crap. All right, let's see how uh, Esconer handles this hit. And this stage is powers 40,000. They love throwing up these power level numbers. Oh my god, that voice. Jesus. Alright. Oh my god. Jesus. Is she talking about Esconer? Yeah, it's rising with every moment. <laughs> uh, oh my god, it just gave him a little cut. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't he turn to stone unless he's actually able to just control his commandment? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh. Oh. Oh, he backed out of the fight and turned to stone. Damn. Yep. Jesus. <laughs> oh. Oh, well, she's confident too. Cocoon of Darkness. Oh no, his soul! 
Oh, look how big his soul is. Is his soul gonna be strong? <laughs> is his soul gonna be a badass? <laughs> what the hell? What is he? <laughs> what is he? Oh my god. Sunshine. Oh my god. Did she just split in two? There was like two parts that went down after that. Hmm. Oh my god. This is what he becomes during the day. Sunshine is his power. He somehow harnesses shit from the sun, doesn't he? <laughs> All right. Yep, nighttime, and he's back to this personality again. Interesting. Yep, making him a wacky guy. <laughs> Please forgive me for ever being born. <laughs> Interesting. Uh. <clears throat> yes, it's his pride. <laughs> oh, no, you need a shirt. <laughs> King! Aww. And that's it. One hell of an episode, guys. God damn. It's funny, because I was actually just saying last episode, um... I think it was last episode, or maybe it was a couple episodes ago, but I was saying that I, I can't wait for some of those really badass moments again, you know? I miss those, like, uh, Meliodas showing off how strong he is by, like, catching the spear and throwing it back, you know, in the, in the first season and stuff like that. I really like those, uh, like, shows of badass, but then we learned about the characters and we started, like, not seeing that as much, you know? Like, I loved when Bond and Meliodas arm wrestled and, and, like, broke the entire, like, prison or whatever. Uh, I loved moments like that. But, uh, 
I was saying how I missed stuff like that, and I wanted some of that again, and I was hoping when we got into these fights, we'd see some of that, especially with Meliodas getting this, like, big power boost, but now we ran into Esconer, who, I mean, we just saw what he's capable of. That's insane. All right, guys. Oh, we have after credits. I didn't pause for once. What? Oh, we have the giants. I hope this is after credits. And... It's not formatted like previews, I don't think. Oh, she lost a leg. I don't know if we noticed that before. I don't know. <laughs> Whoa! Interesting. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Interesting coming from Matrona. Alrighty. That is the end of episode 14. Yes. Uh, yeah, so we ran into uh, Esconer just by complete coincidence. It was very convenient that they fell into that ditch, lived, and then walked down it, and there happened to be his tavern in a weird, creepy tunnel. Like, I guess he was hiding out, so I guess that makes sense, you know. Uh, because he, you know, the seven deadly sins were wanted, so he was, he was trying to, uh, make sure he wasn't found, but... <clears throat> but his power is very interesting. He is able to... He is somehow able to kind of, like, harness the power of the sun. I don't know if it's actually harnessing the power of the sun, but during the day, he's bulked up. His personality is different, you know? It seems like that might be where he gets the name, like, Pride, you know? Like, he seems very prideful during the day, but then not so much at night, and maybe that's, like... Because, you know, even though, you know, these all these different sins have their different stuff, like, Meliodas doesn't always show his wrath and stuff like that, so... Just because they have those, uh, those principles to him. Just because he's pride doesn't mean he always have to be prideful, you know? Um, but, but yeah, so, I I'm wondering what he is. Like, why is he so strong? Um, you know, like, I'm a I imagine we're gonna have to get some backstory at some point, kind of explaining it, or even if it's just a quick little thing, explaining it, you know? Uh, because, like... You would think if you could just train to achieve Esconer's level of strength, there'd be more people like that in the world, right? So why is Esconer way above so many people, you know? Like, what what makes him that powerful is what I'm wondering. Uh, but, I mean, I guess it comes at a great cost, so it almost reminds me of, like, Hunter Hunter conditions. Like, I want to be extremely strong during the day, but the cost of that is I'm going to be extremely weak at night, you know? That leaves a ginormous opening. As soon as any bad guys find that out, they will only hunt you at night, you know? So, it's, uh... It definitely does have... Even though he has extreme power during the day, it does leave a pretty ginormous weakness. But, but yeah, I mean... Once again, like I said during the outro, I just sometimes really love extreme shows of power like that. Like, it, it, that was a lot of fun. Just, like, Galland just buffing up, buffing up, and that girl's like, his power level is 40,000 while he's in this state. He does a massive attack, creates a giant smoke cloud, tears up mountains in the distance and everything, and it's just, like, a little cut on his arm. <laughs> like... That shit is so badass. I, I love that kind of stuff. Um, obviously, having too much of that would get old, but like I said, I, I felt like it's been a long time since we've seen something like that. Granted, we did have Meliodas teleport and mess up the, the guys. That was kind of like that, you know? That was 
that was very close to like that that badassery that I wanted to see. Um, but but before that, we didn't really have too much of those like crazy moments where it's just like holy shit, this person is strong, you know. Um, but but yeah, I I really liked the introduction to Esconer. It's really funny how he was just. He accepted Galen's challenge, but then got knocked out by a little slap until daytime, where he just became extremely powerful. It just kind of worked out for him, you know? Because if they had fought then, at night, he would have been screwed. Uh, but, luckily, I-, I wonder if it was strategy. Did he purposely stay passed out that whole time? Or was he actually just passed out that whole time? I'm not sure, but... But yeah, he considers uh, Esconer, at least in his pride state, considers himself the pinnacle of all the races. I wonder if that has to do with his power somehow, you know? Is that just his pridefulness, or does he have a reason to believe that, right? Like, is there something about him that makes him, you know, the pinnacle of all the races? Like, is he, like, the son of God or something? I don't know. And, like, that that makes him just insanely powerful. And and all the races came from God or something, and that's why he's the the pinnacle of all the races. I don't know. Obviously, that's, a, that's an ass pull of a theory. I don't think it's that. I was just throwing some random ass theory out there. But, but yeah, I mean, now that we know so much about all the other sins, I'm actually really looking forward to learning more about Esconer. You know, it's cool having another, like, mysterious character in the show. And once we know about Esconer, I feel like a lot of the mystery of the show is going to be gone. And it's going to be more about the stories they tell with these characters that we know so well, you know. Which can still be extremely good. But for the longest time, it's been about, like, okay, we know Meliodas is a sin from, like, the first episode, I think, is uh, is when we find out. And, uh... And then we start running into some of the other ones, and we're slowly meeting them all, you know? And by, by like, the end of Season 1, I think we, like, know all of them except for Esconer. And, uh, because I think even Merlin showed up at the end, right? Yeah, and then, uh, now we're, now we're meeting Esconer. Once we get the backstory on him, you know, we're gonna have, like, all the Seven Sins, we're gonna have all their backstory and stuff... And it's just going to be, like, the, the good stories they tell from then on. Because I think there's another season after this one, isn't there? I'm not sure. Maybe there's another one coming. I'm not positive. I haven't looked into it. I need to check it out, though. But especially because we're, like, coming up to, like, the last, like, 10 or 11 episodes, I think. So, um, if, if this is the last season, then we're looking at, like, six or seven episodes until I make the poll, so I do need to look into that, but either way, um, yeah, they're, they're coming up with this, like, kind of an ass pull of a explanation, I think, but I'm not sure if what Jericho said is gonna be true, but they're saying that Elaine was brought back with, like, because of her regrets, and they're saying that her love for Bon is going to be enough to keep her around. I wonder if that's just an like what Jericho is hoping for, or if that's what it's going to end up being. Like, is Elaine's love for Bon and wanting to be with Bon enough of a regret to keep her there? I don't know. That seems like a silly solution if they're just going to be like, well, we want to keep Elaine around. How should we do it? Oh, let's just make it so her love for Bon keeps her there. Like... It seems very, like, lazy, I feel like, but I'm not gonna really, like, I know I'm judging it, but I'm not gonna, like, cement my belief in that until I find out if that's really what's going on. Like, if they never bring up Elaine dying again, then I think that's gonna be kind of dumb, you know? But I think it needs to be something where they need to find a way to, to keep her around, you know? Um, I feel like it's something they need to, to work for, you know? So, we'll see. Uh, I just hope it's not going to be, like, the power of love keeps Elaine here, you know? I, I can, I, that's fine if it keeps her around a little longer than she should be, but I think it's a little wrong if it's, like, a permanent thing. Like, she's just permanently back because of that, but... Because, like, what would happen, like, the second they have a fight, and maybe her love wavers, is she's going to drop dead? Like, I don't know. Or, like, maybe after she's here for a certain amount of time, it... It, like, cements her to the, like, the the plane of the living again. 
I don't know. Like, I feel like that's way too open-ended of, like, a, of an idea. I feel like they need to come up with a, a, like, a real way that she lives, but... Anyway, that's my thoughts on the matter. But, yeah. Man, Escanor, I love that, uh... To, to go back to Escanor, he was just powering up this massive attack, and his power, like, the Merlin was just, like, power levels, like, 50,000, 60,000, and, like... It obviously tried to lead you to believe, because that was the time that, uh, um, Galland was powering up. It was trying to lead you to believe that that was Galland's power level. But then, uh, Meliodas is like, yep, that's Escunner. And it's like, damn, you know, which, I mean, I saw that coming, but that was, that was fantastic. I, I love that. And then, uh, Galland just runs away when, when, uh, Escunner goes to do his attack, that was just so funny. Um, it was just like, he because he was just gone. And my first thought, even though I didn't say it out loud, was I thought the girl, the girl wanted him to leave. So I thought she teleported him away or something, or like launched him away or something in order to just like make it so he lived, you know? Uh, but, but nope. And then it just panned to the side and it was just him running away. <laughs> like that was so funny. Um, but, but yeah, so, unless there's a way that Galland can break free of that, or someone of his demon race saves him, like, one of the other commandments is able to save him from it, that's the end of Galland, you know? And, assuming, you know, it's kind of hard, because we saw her burn and fall down a, a cliff, but, I mean, we saw Galland put himself together when he was cut in half, so I feel like... If they wanted to, it's possible for, like, Meliculus or whatever her name is to still be alive. Uh, but, but yeah, that was crazy. She just ate his soul, and his soul was so powerful that it just burned her up with sunshine, you know? And then he, he just fucking lit her on fire, and she just fell. I'm pretty sure she cut, cut in half, because I saw, like... She, like, hit a rock, and then I saw two parts falling that were on fire. So I'm pretty sure she got, like, cut in half and stuff. So I'm gonna assume she's dead, but I guess I just probably won't be very surprised if she shows up again, you know? But, yeah, a fantastic episode, guys. I absolutely loved it. It was a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to learning more about Esconer and, uh, and seeing some more of these fights. I'm assuming we're gonna have to see... I'm, I'm assuming the other commandments are going to be stronger, or some of the other ones are going to be stronger, because now with Esconer's strength, I feel like, like, Merlin could just teleport Esconer there, and he could just kill them all during the day, you know? Well, I guess they're not all in one spot anymore, but I feel like Esconer could just kill them all, like, in one hit, you know? So I feel like the other ones are going to have to somehow be strong enough, like, stronger than Galen and stuff like that to to compete, but the, they're scaling the power very quickly in this show, like, we had Meliodas get his, uh, his power back, and he was, like, what, 350,000 power level, or some shit like that, and then we have Esconer, who was, like, 40,000, but then, like, charged his attack up to 60,000, probably can charge it even higher, you know, so, like, the power scaling is really getting up there. We're, we're gonna be like... Th these numbers are gonna get ridiculous here, I feel like, as the show goes on. But, but yeah. Anyway, I'm looking forward to the rest of the fights. I'm sure they're gonna be interesting. And, uh, and I don't know how this season is gonna conclude. I mean, I assume we might take care of the demon threat. But I wonder if there is another season what the threat's gonna be, you know? Because the... The returning of the demon race has been hinted at since season one, so... I don't know, we'll just have to see how this ends, you know, what... Maybe the goddess race returning and them being, like, crazy pants or something, I don't know. But yeah, guys, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you did. Check out my Patreon, the link is in the description. If you want to see the next episode right now, you can do that on there. I appreciate the support. And, uh, there's also Patreon-exclusive shows on there, like Violet Evergarden and Soul Eater, so check that out if you're interested. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my future reactions. Bye!